Okay. So, well, thank you for, for those of you who, who have joined. And uh, I hope you find these uh, useful in some way or another. Um, so my name is Paula and um, that's my email and my Twitter. If you want to like contact me or anything, or if you want me to share the slides at the end, that's completely fine. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, using digital tools um, available to help you during your PhD. I found these very, very helpful for, for me, like in terms of keeping organized, keeping a record of everything. And um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about my own experience and then other things that you can do as well. And um, just to see if like this can help someone else and you find this uh, useful for yourselves as well. Okay, so why I think the, the digital tools are important for uh, PhD students? Well, first of all, during your PhD, as you know, you need to deal with very, very large volumes of data, of documents, of notes, etc. So knowing how to keep them all um, tidy and organized is very important, I think. So technology can help us with that. And there are a few programs or apps that I'm going to show you that may help you with this. Um, you can keep track of everything you read in an organized way. This for me at the beginning was a big struggle because I was reading uh, a lot of things, I was making notes, et cetera. And then I thought, oh, how am I gonna remember this in like two, three years time? So I explored a little bit with different things um, and these tools that I'm gonna show you um, have helped me. So um, this is, and also um, digital tools can help us to take notes and conferences you attend and keep them uh, organized and very important to help you with your planning for your PhD, which is a key element of the whole PhD process and how you're going to uh, develop everything. Okay, so this is the reason. Um, so I kind of divided my uh, presentation into four different sections. So um, tools that you're going to use for planning, other uh, things that you're going to use for annotation, reference management and then qualitative data uh, analysis um, tools for that too. I don't have anything on quantitative because I'm not very familiar with that. But at the end, I have a link where you can find like other resources available for UWS students. So maybe you can explore that and you can find more things there. Some of the programs or apps that I'm going to show you today kind of have overlapping functions so you can do the same thing with more than one thing, that's okay. Um, you can use what best suits you, what you think it's more appropriate for you, maybe none of it, maybe some of it, okay? So um, you can do the same thing with more than one uh, of these apps. So I'm gonna show you all the options and then you can choose. Okay, so let's just start with planning tools. These are key to keep you focused, to know what you need to do. It's quite important when you're doing such a long, um, project like your PhD that you know what you need to do at each time, each week, each day, etc. So having a good um, planning tool, it's it's quite relevant. Um, so this will help you to keep focus in a quite visual way and to know what you need to do the next day. So this be, this um, notion, I don't know if anyone knows about this, but is um, a lifesaver. And so you can access it following that link, www.notion.so. And the good thing, and I think one of the things I really like about Notion is that you can have it on your browser, on your phone, on your tablet, depends on um, how you work or where you work. So for example, I uh, when I'm working on my laptop, I have it on my uh, browser. And then if I want to just quickly check something, I check it on the phone and it uh, synchronized. So it's quite handy that way. And it's quite easy to use, it's free. And um, you can have everything or a lot of things in the one space. So I think this is a good tool. And I'm going to show you how um, some examples of things that you can do with Notion. Now, Notion has a lot of templates and you can personalize this however you like. So I'm going to show you some examples of how I have it, just to kind of give you an idea. But I mean, um, you can 
use this in different ways. So when I go into an ocean, this is what I see. Um, so I like to have a, um, a countdown of the days I have until submission. I like to keep track of my writing hours just to keep me motivated and focused. But, you know, if that stress you out, don't have that. Uh, I have a direct access to my meeting notes to know what I've been discussing with my supervisor. Um, and then a to-do list of things that they need to do. So that way, for me, it's very visual to see what I have completed, what I'm doing and what I still need to do before my next meeting. Um, that kind of motivates me as well a little bit to, to see like how I'm progressing, what things I need to do, et cetera. Uh, but this, you can move it around and you can you know, do whatever you want in a way that fits your own needs. What else can we do with Notion? This, um, this is like a planner. This is how it looks like. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to know that this is helpful for some people. Um, this is like a, a planner. This is also a part of Notion. Okay, so this is my own example. Okay, so this is how it looked like for December, 2021. So I decided I need to do a few things. So how long will it take me? And how important was that? So for example, as you can see, I had to write my findings, part one. This is still in progress and this is a long, long thing. So it goes across all these days. But I, break, I broke these down in different mini tasks. So the transcription of this, this was high and I completed it within the days that I scheduled for it. So four days or five days or however. So the good thing as well is that if your plan change, which it will, then you can just easily change your, your timeline thing. So you can just scroll and move it around to, to, to suit your, um, you know, your schedule better. But for me, this is also very visual because I come in here and I'm like, okay, what day is it? What do I need to do? Um, and that's it. Okay, so maybe this helps some people. Other thing that you can do is keeping a record of your meeting notes, conference notes, whatever you take notes on um, and you can tag them to um, see them easier. Okay, so as you can see, I keep track of my meetings. So I created a model one so you can see what I include in, inside, but um, again, you can do whatever suits you, just I'm showing you the options. So normally I like to put my goals there, what I'm aiming to discuss with my supervisor because I only get limited time, so I want to make sure everything gets discussed. Then what I have actually discussed and then what things I'm going to do. These action items, I will then move them into my to-do list here to, to then get them done. Uh, and then another good thing of this is that, um, for example, in the discussion items in the second point, I, had, I put my supervisor suggested me to read this and this, which I have added to my reading list. And if you click on reading list, they'll take you directly to that. So you don't need to have like different papers and different notebooks, everything, and um, you just create a direct access to it. Okay, so uh, this is why I like Notion so much. And um, there are many other things that you can do, like the reading list, for example, you can keep a, a, a list of things that, well, I use it for things that I, I want to read in the future, but you can maybe create um, a reference list if you want or whatever. So this is how Notion works. Um, the next block of things that I want to show you is annotation, um, annotation tools. So when I started my PhD, um, one of the things my supervisor told me like the very, very beginning was um, make sure you take good notes because they will help you in the future. You will need them and they'll save you so much time. And I keep that in my head till this day because um, I am very careful of being organized with my notes and everything. As I said at the beginning, I really struggled with this. Uh, when I started, I was like, wow, there's like so much going on. I'm reading on a lot of different topics. I don't know how to keep track of this. Um, I'm just going to forget. So I started to explore and I really like these two apps. So one is OneNote, which you probably all know, and good notes that I'm not sure if you know. So I'm gonna show you how um, this can be used to create good annotations uh, from your own um, journal articles that you read or books, etc. 
again, this is an, my own example, okay? So um, OneNote is very good for organizing your notes on journal articles or meeting notes, conferences, etc. You can synchronize it to your um, own device, to the, all the different devices. So um, this is the desktop version, but you can also have it in your phone or your tablet. And it's free to use for everyone um, standing at the UWS. So the way you can access this is through your um, Office 365 package. So you can either access it um, online, like you, you access your email and all these, uh, or you can download the desktop version and then have it on your desktop, which I recommend because it's, it's easier to use, I think. It has more options. So this is very good because, you know, it allows you to create like different, um, let's say, notebooks or sections. So, for example, I'm reading on gender, everything that I read on gender, I'll put it here with like a little reference and my own sum summary of this uh, book. In, this is a book, so this book, or if it's an article, then of the article. Uh, and you can create, oops, sorry, you can create the different um, sections of the different topics that you've written in. Also, if you want to like, for example, I have one, it's called Tips for Students. This is my own um, list of resources for my own students. So um, that's, this is how I organize it, okay? And another thing that I um, find quite useful for um, keeping notes is good notes, okay? This is much better in terms of keeping everything in the one place because it allows you to not only make notes, but also annotate PDFs. So if you are you know, reading a, a journal article, you can annotate it there. You don't need to print it out and then um, you know, lose it and then print it again, et cetera. So you can annotate it there. Uh, and you can also create notebooks to make notes of your own um, thoughts or whatever, okay? Uh, now, the bad thing about this, though, is that um, you can only use it in a tablet or an iPad, uh, and it's not free. Um, it cost me like seven pounds or so. So it's not like super expensive, but maybe you can you prefer using OneNote since that one is free. Um, but, um, you know, I just wanted to give you the option and to know that that exists. So as you can see here in the example, um, you can annotate directly into the PDF or um, and then you can create folders of things that you are working on or et cetera. So um, this is how it looks like. And um, OK, now the next section of apps that are crucial for PhD students are reference management tools. So the biggest ones are Zotero, Mendeley, or EndNote. I'm going to focus on EndNote because it's the one that is recommended by the UWS. So that's what the one I'm going to focus on, but all of them work quite similar. Okay, so this is essential because it allows you to keep record of, of all your references uh, and then also well sort it out in different folders, etc. And most importantly, which is a lifesaver, add your references directly into your Word documents. For everyone who's starting their PhD now, I do recommend you that you do this from the very beginning. Don't wait until you finish the chapter to then add your references because that will may take you days. It's better if you add, um, add your references as you go, like as you are writing. I know some people like to leave them till the end, but um, personally, I think you save a lot more time if you just do it as you go. Okay, so EndNote will help you with this. Um, so with EndNote, you can uh, store all your references. You can add them manually from, um, sorry, automatically, just if you put the, the what's the name of this? The, the name of the journal or something, it will, up, uh, it will add up, um, okay then you can organize them into the different like groups that or, or topics that you're researching on. You can share them. This is helpful if you want to share them with your supervisor or with other um, students or if you're working with um, other people. And what I said, I automatically, automatically generates a reference list that you can um, add into your 
war documents okay just a little summary like this is the functions of it for me the the most important one is the one that you can just insert everything into microsoft word i cannot highlight this enough how important this is um okay oops right and this is how it looks like so you can easily search if you cannot remember the name of the full article and you just remember it's on gender and identity, just search their gender and identity and it will come up. So again, it's quite helpful for this. As you can see in this example, there are like different folders and it's good to kind of keep record of, of things and go back to them later because you will probably need this. Okay. And finally, let's talk about Envivo. <laughs> Envivo is... Well, for me, it was a life changer. Um, this uh, is a qualitative data analysis tool, but people also use it for the literature review. Okay, regardless what you're doing, what type of data analysis you're doing, you can also use it for your literature review. Um, luckily, we have uh, access to this through the university. Um, so what you need to do is just you download this uh, program into your laptop and then you email IT and you ask for the for the number for the license and that's it and then you can use it you need to renew it every day every so not every day every year but it's fine you can just um, ask them to to give you the license number again and that's it okay now uh, basically what this does is um, to you import your PDFs into this, and then you can sort this out into different, let's say, boxes or categories. So for the elite review, for example, what I did uh, was importing all the documents I was planning to use. And then I sort them out into different um, topics as, or sections in your elite review. So it's as simple as you just highlight this and then drag it into the category that you want. So for example, if this article is about epistemology, you will just um, drag this section into what it says epistemology and that's it. Okay, so that's the first step when you're using in vivo. The same if you are using um, transcriptions for, from your interviews, if you're using interviews, you have the transcription there and you drag them into the different codes to then uh, write your themes or whatever you're doing with them. Um, and after you do this, you can visualize your data or your, or your, day, um, your different um, extracts that you've taken from, from the text in different ways. So for example, when I was doing my lead review, for me, it was very helpful this first view that is, it's called hierarchy view. So I could see like the sections and subsections and what things belong to what, and that helped me write in a lot. Uh, for the data analysis, perhaps the word cloud is, is more helpful or this other view here, but you know, you can explore with this, but it's quite good as well. If you're doing a presentation, you can save this as an image and then put it into your presentation. If you're going to, you know, present your, your, your data or your lit review. So this is how you can uh, use in vivo. Um, but it's quite a complex program. So um, there is a, a Teams um, group that if you just click there, it will take you there, like, directly into it. And there is like a in vivo community uh, where we normally, you know, if you have a question, you ask that question, sometimes people know it or they put like um, links or things that are helpful. So maybe you want to join that. This YouTube channel, um, I've learned pretty much everything about them people with this uh, YouTube channel. And then there is like more uh, blogs here. So I've put a link into that. So if you want this slides, just ask me, okay? Because I'll happily share this with you. Okay, just in case you want to know a little bit more about them people. And as I said at the beginning, um, there are more resources that you can use. I just wanted to select what I thought it was going to be more useful for people who are starting their, their PhD now, but you can access this link and you can see all the software that is available uh, for quantitative data as well. Um, so you can explore other things as well if you, if you think that's, that's helpful. Okay, so 
that's the end of my presentation. I want to leave some time if you want to, I don't know, um, ask any question or comment or anything. Just time for yourselves, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very, very, very much, Bola, for a very, very interesting and very useful uh, tools uh, that I, you know, I, I really, you know, um, I think I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of you know, use, use some of them. So um, I will, I will leave the, uh, the floor for, for, uh, for students if they have any questions. And um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm recording this. And uh, once I've got the link for this one, because I know that everybody definitely will need that, along with the slides, uh, I will I will send everyone an email with the slides and the link to the to 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 to, to today's session. Okay, I can I can share I can send you the slides at yeah. the end if you want, and then you can just distribute them. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, any any questions, guys, for Bola? Uh, Manel, yes. Can you can you go ahead? Yes, go ahead. Um, hello, Paula. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to thank you for this useful presentation. It was amazing. And I have a question. Um, I was wondering, in uh, when using in vivo, for example, in interviews, if you have like a small amount of data, you don't have so many interviews. Do you recommend using in vivo anyway? or uh, just do it manually? What do you think is easier? Um, it takes a while to learn how to use in vivo. So, um, but the ones you know how to use it, I think I will always recommend in vivo. So it depends if it's just a small project and you're just going to you know, analyze four interviews and that's it. Maybe mm -hmm. it's not worth the time of learning how to use in vivo. But if you're going to, um, you know, maybe have in the future more interviews, I definitely recommend using it because um, I did my, when I did my master's, I, I, I did it manually and it's just that, you know, you have papers for all, <laughs> all around the floor and post-its and things and it's just yeah. very messy while, while in vivo is just in your screen and you can visualize it, you can have it there and it's just mm -hmm. very clean, very tidy, everything. So I definitely recommend Envivo, even if it's a small project. Okay, because I am novice in Envivo. I basically do not know anything about it. And I was wondering whether it's going to be easier for me to just do it manually. So that was my, my concern. But you do have quite a bit of interviews, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. But it, it, I guess I can manage it so far, but I'm expecting more interviews in the future, in fact, yes. Um, the, the other good thing about in vivo, I think, in terms of um, data analysis, is that you can easily change your mind. So if you think, oh, this theme is no longer important, I'll just, or this thing belongs to this theme rather than to this theme, um, you can easily change that. Well, if you're doing it manually, maybe you want to repeat mm -hmm. it again. That's another good thing. But you know, yeah. you can explore it and see if it works for you. Okay. Thank I would you, I would really agree with Bola because you know I think the PhD journey is this is where you you are going to learn everything because once you finish and you go to whatever job you are looking for, whether it's academia, whether it's in the industry, they expecting you to know everything. And there will not be enough time for you to sit down and learn something new. So, um, I, 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 but now you are a PhD student, you are a B, in a PhD program, and you have to learn softwares and you have to learn all of this to make to make them the life easier for you. Uh, and of course, you know, talking about technology, I think you know um, we're moving ahead toward toward using more technology rather than using uh, anything manual. Thank yes, you. I totally agree. Yes, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, I think there is a, a question on the chat uh, for you, Paula. Someone asking, um, uh, can 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 in vivo be used if, uh, to analyze pictures? Uh, I think it's only for texts. As as far as I know, it's not something I have done personally. So, um, but I think it's just for uh, text, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, guys?
Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you very, very, very much, Bola. And I, I must admit that, you know, um, there are kind of a group of uh, PhD students at the end of their second year and uh, some of them at, at, at the third and fourth year who volunteered to provide some support um, for PhD students in general. And this is why you can see uh, uh, that I'm inviting you for a BDB every single week. I'm not saying that, you know, you have to attend them all. But just have a wee look because I'm always sending you the title and the presenter. If you think that this is will benefit you any by anyhow, of course you are very welcome to attend. Uh, thank you again and good luck. And I will download that and I'm waiting for your PowerPoint slides, Bola, to send it to everyone. Thank you very much again. See you. you. Bye. Bye.